Welcome to the Atlantico podcast, where we talk about the science behind the Atlantico project, the Atlantic Ocean, and the human adventures experienced along the way. Here, we have conversations with guests from around the world who work together so that we can better understand, manage, and protect the ocean. So let's embark on the journey of Atlantico and discover the world that lies above and beneath the surface of the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. Today we have the pleasure to welcome Clémentine Moulin on the podcast. She is from the Tara Ocean Foundation and during the conversation, Clem is telling us about the work that the foundation does and more specifically about the challenges and rewards that come with organizing a scientific sampling expedition. Clem, it is a pleasure to have you with us today. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. We like to start the podcast by learning about our guests to understand their journey to where they are today and where their love for the ocean comes from. So can you tell us where it all started for you and what your journey has been to what you do today? That's a tough question. <laughs> let's not go back too much in the past, but let's say that the ocean has always been a big passion for me since I'm a, I'm a little girl. I'm a free diver. I'm a diver. I'm a sailor. I feel good on the water. I feel good beneath the water. I've always been curious and fascinated by what actually lives beneath the water. And so I wanted to learn more. And I guess it made sense for me to come and start working at the foundation. I always wanted to be a marine biologist, but I got lost in my studies, let's say. And then so I ended up starting uh, as a communication intern at the Tao Ocean Foundation. But I did not only do communication, let's say that I've done many different tasks. And I guess this is why they brought me back to be in charge of the logistics a few years later. Nice. And how did you get involved in, in Atlantico then? So the Tao Ocean uh, Foundation is part of the Atlantico project with the Tara sailing boat. That is one of the six flagships that are in the project Atlantico. So since the beginning, the Tara Ocean Foundation is involved in the Atlantic project. We've submitted the project together and then we had to put everything in place for the boat to actually leave and start the sampling on board. So with my job, with what I do, I'm in charge of the logistics and the operations. So I anticipated the mission <laughs> before, during and after. The episode today is focused on learning about the ins and outs of organizing a scientific expedition at sea. And you've been doing that for some time now with all the, the Tara expeditions that have been happening in the past. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about what Tara does and also what it means to organize an expedition, what it involves. Well, so the Tara Ocean Foundation, um, the office is based in Paris, but we have a sailing boat, Tara. And the Tara Ocean Foundation is the first public interest group in France that is dedicated to, uh, to the ocean. So what we do, we study the ocean through our sailing boats. Uh, we conduct high-level uh, scientific research, and we do that in collaboration with different laboratories from all around the world. And the idea to really explore and understand the ocean. We don't only explore the ocean, we also like to share what we have seen on the boat. So um, on Tara, there are scientists that are uh, sampling and that are studying the ocean. So through the Tara Ocean Foundation, we explore the ocean, but we also share what has been seen by the scientists. Within the team, we have people that will take what scientists have seen on the boat and make, make it accessible to the public to raise awareness. We also have a team connecting everything around the um, educational programs. So we have students in France, but also in the rest of the world that are following uh, what the boat is doing. And we have a partnership with the educational ministry back in France. There is a team that is trying to, let's say, educate the politicians to make sure that they follow what we actually seen are based on facts that are seen on Terra. We also have a team that, that is looking for funds, of course, that does the fundraising because a project like this without any funds uh, wouldn't go anywhere. We also have, of course, a team for communication and a, a team for, for the logistics. And this is the team that I am responsible for. Brilliant. So to talk about the, the expedition, what does your job entail? What do you have to do to make sure that everything runs smoothly? Where to start? <laughs> Being in charge of the logistics and the operation of the Tower Ocean Foundation is really multitasking. We, we anticipate the routes. Uh, Tara's route with the scientists before the boat leaves, depending on the specific areas that the scientists want to target. And if it is actually possible with Tara, depending on weather and sea conditions. Uh, we also do a lot of scientific coordination to make sure that everybody's on the same page, um, that what the scientists want to do on board 
uh, and the uh, scientific equipment they want to deploy is actually possible. Um, we are the link between the Tara Ocean Foundation's team on land, but also the crew and also the PIs that are coordinating this mission, and also the scientists that are on the boats. We also follow the international conventions such as uh, the Montego Bay Treaty, but also the Nagoya Protocols, and sometimes, depending on the mission, the CITES Convention, uh, in order to obtain the research permits before entering uh, waters where we will be sampling with the boats. We also make sure that we have the right people on the boat to get the, the job done. Um, and we make sure that we never forget someone <laughs> uh, on land. Um, so we could, we basically, we are part of the mission before it starts, during, but also after to deal with everything that we need to do while the mission is finished. Um, and I guess we can say that the, we are the, the red line that keeps it all together in a sense. And you also have the, I guess, the port calls to organize, right? During stopovers, um, we invite students to come on the boat. We invite the public to come on the boat. We organize events with local scientists, with local politicians. The idea is really to, to meet also local NGOs to see what they do and how we interact and how we can, um, what we can do together, what we can, where we can create synergies and on the long term, not just on a, on, not only during the stopover. Yeah, nice. So joining forces all around the world to take better care of the ocean. To bring this into the context of Atlantico, let's talk about the latest expedition, Mission Microbiomes, which is the current expedition of the Tara Ocean Foundation, which is directly linked to the activities of Atlantico. Can you tell us a little bit about it, where we have been, where we are going, and what has been done along the way so far? The Terra Microbiome Mission left France um, and Lorient, which is its home back in France, in December 2020 for a two-year mission. The boat left and went straight down to Chile, and then it went up the Chilean coast. Then it crossed from the Pacific side to the Atlantic side through the Panama Canal, and then we stopped in the French Indies um, for a shipyard because we had to install new instruments in the boat. And then it went down the coast of South America, uh, around Brazil, Argentina, and then Antarctica before crossing back the Atlantic Ocean uh, to the African side. We landed in South Africa in Cape Town and then went up to Wallace Bay in Namibia. And then the boat is actually right now in Luanda in Angola. And then it will be going to the Republic Democratic of Congo, to Congo, to Gambia, to Senegal. And then finally in Portugal before reaching Lorient again on October 15, 2022. During this mission, it's, it's uh, let's say it's the continuity of, of other Tara mission. There was a big mission that was called Tara Ocean, where we, we were looking at what type of plankton exists, what was beneath the ocean, and what, what was there, let's say. And then we discovered a new species of plankton. We have discovered the how the plankton interacts together. So we discovered how they function as an ecosystem. And now during this mission, we really wanted to know um, how they are impacted by natural impacts, just like um, upwellings, just like what we're studying right now with the Benguela current off of the African coast. But also other natural impacts can be the impact of a river estuary. How does the Amazon River impact the microbiome or how would the the rivers in Africa impact uh, the microbiome? Or how does the fresh water that is melting from the glaciers in, um, in Chile or in Antarctica, for example, how does it interact with the plankton? But then with this mission, we also want to look at the non-natural impacts such as chemicals or as plastic. So this is why we will also be going up rivers um, on the African side. Basically, all the missions of Tara are interconnected to explore the microbiome, to explore the biodiversity that lives under the ocean. And, and every time we go deeper into the science on each mission, you have to know that Tara is a small boat. It's a small research vessel. It's a 36 meters long boat. There are only 14 people on the boat, only six scientists, six crew members. We have one journalist, and we also have an artist on the boat. 
and everybody is working together to make sure that we are following the same goal and going to the same place. It's really a boat where there are people with different jobs, multidisciplinary, but also from different nationalities in order to make science possible. Yeah, the Tara boat is very peculiar. It's um, it's not like the massive sampling cruises or uh, the other ships that might be available to research institutes all over the world. So its particularities allows it to maybe go in some places that other boats cannot access. So it makes it quite unique in the way it contributes to the scientific knowledge creation and knowledge sharing, I guess. Yeah, definitely. So the history of the boat is very special, let's say. It actually had two lives before being Terra. The boat was built in 1989 in France uh, by Jean-Louis Etienne, who is a French explorer, and then it was sold to Sir Peter Blake in New Zealand, and now it's owned by the Tar Ocean Foundation back in France. If this boat could speak, it would have a lot to say, definitely. Um, and this boat was made to go into polar regions. That's why the boat got stuck in the ice in the Arctic during the Tar Arctic mission. And then this is why during this mission, Tar Microbiome, we went in Antarctica uh, in really rough conditions and, and rough seas. But the boat is strong and the boat is made to, to, to follow those, those conditions. It's also a sailing boat. Research vessels usually are motorboats. So it's very different because with this boat, we can do uh, long-term missions. We can go out for years rather than going just a few days, a few weeks or a few months in one particular spot. With Tara, we create long-term missions that last uh, years. And then also being a sailing boat, you can go to different places where it's fine if you don't if you can't do a um, refueling. Taha has a very let's say low draft we can um, bring the drifts back up uh, on board Tara so we can go to places where the water is is not too deep so you can enter an atoll for example in, in French Polynesia. So the boat is strong the boat needs fuel because of course when there's no wind we still use the engines and because scientific uh, equipment really need a lot of energy. We also use uh, generators on board in order to have enough power to um, deploy all the scientific instruments that we use in order to sample and to study the water column. Nice. And um, there's a story behind the name Tara. Can you, can you tell us what it means? Yes, definitely. So I don't know if you heard about the American literature and the book called Gone with the Wind. The main hero is Scarlett O'Hara. It was also adapted to a movie. She always wants to go back to Tara. Tara is the place where she feels at home, where she feels safe. So it's a big um, plantation. It's a big house. And she always wants to come back. It's a happy, happy story, let's say. But on Tara, it's very true. As I said before, we have people coming from all around, like uh, doing different things, different backgrounds, different nationalities. And in the end, it's it's just like a flatmates that are all together and that are getting along and that are there for the same objectives. People work together. We have the crew that help the science to deploy the instruments every day. And we have the scientists that help the crew to make sure that the boat goes in the right direction. We can help the, the crew to uh, maneuver the boat. There are also the scientists that take care of the night watches because we never leave the boat unintended. So it's really true. When people come on Tara, um, usually sometimes while they're there, it's great, but it can also be hard because it's a really, it's a, it's a working boat. Sometimes you don't even see one person during the day because everybody's following uh, very specific protocols for the scientists or a very specific um, task when you're a crew member. Uh, but you're happy um, to share a moment where you discuss, to share um a night watch or to share lunch or dinner together. And then when you leave the boat, let's say that a lot of people cry. <laughs> and they want to come back, right? It's the place where you want to go back. Definitely. And they really hope they can come back. Let's say the 99.9 .9 people that I have met on this boat are never happy to leave the boat and wish that they could come back. And they often do, right? Exactly. And um, maybe you can share one of your core memories from either one of the expeditions or one of your times on the boat itself. If if you had to to recall one of those moments, which one would it be? I know it must be hard because you've lived many, but is there one that jumps to the front? I'd say that there are so many of them for sure. And, and there is also what I lived on the boat, but also what I'm living every day, let's say, with the logistics team. Um, I, could, I could probably speak about all those beautiful places I went to or... 
or maybe also the fact that it was hard to actually have this mission leave during the COVID uh, situation three years ago. But I think the most important is to to talk about the hidden victories that we have each day <laughs> to make sure that the, this boat continues and that this mission goes on. We have designed a, uh, an itinerary probably three or four years ago now. And even with COVID, we have followed every stopover and everywhere we were supposed to go. Yeah, I'm happy to share this with the logistics team, to share this with the science team, with the team on land, with the team on, on board, with the crew. In the end, this is my best memory for this mission, is actually that the mission is still ongoing. And Yeah, so the core memory started years ago and it's still being building up over time. Exactly. That's beautiful. Clem, thanks so much for sharing all of this with us. Um, to our listeners, you can learn more about the Mission Microbiomes, about the next port calls and how to participate by going onto our website or Tara Ocean Foundation website. We will put all the links in the show notes. And very importantly, if you want to know even more about what Mission Microbiomes is and what it is like to be on board of Tara, you will have to come back to listen to our episodes dedicated to each leg of the expedition. These are the sections of the expedition which are dedicated to answering specific scientific questions and to study particular regions of the Atlantic Ocean. In these episodes, we will discuss with the scientists who have been on board as they share their experience with us. And also make sure to check out our YouTube channel and the YouTube channel of the Tara Ocean Foundation as they share some amazing footage of the places that they've been visiting uh, and of the wildlife that they've seen along the way. We hope that you've enjoyed today's episode and look forward to seeing you next time. You can follow the Atlantico project on our website on www.atlantico.eu and you can also find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. All the links and information on the project and on today's episode is in the show notes. Atlantico is a project funded under Horizon 2020, a European Union research and innovation programme.